Caiaphas is a monk of St. Vincent of Anchali, been a monk for several years. He's given retreats, he's given conferences, and as I mentioned earlier, he and Father Tom authored what I would consider, consider a classic in the spiritual direction. And it's, uh, it's very nicely done. And it, what, what I like most about it is, is it, uh, it addresses the tender side of humanity the vulnerabilities that we have. And it fits in very beautifully with us as Maronites and looking at our life compared to the cross, all the challenges that we have. And so uh, it is our hope and prayer that this, these next two days will be filled with an opportunity for us to look at our vulnerable side and to learn how to perhaps give spiritual direction, but more importantly, Receive. As you know, the church requires of almost all of her ordained ministers to have spiritual director. Priests, bishops, deacons, subdeacons. And I think many of the wives too would say that the spiritual direction is important because you play a huge role in your families and in your parish. So please uh, give your full attention to and give your hearts to Father Boniface as he speaks to us now. Thank you. Bishop Gregory has been such a great encouragement for us. He wrote the foreword to that book that he was referencing. So you can read his words in there too. So grateful for his example and his uh, fatherly love for me spiritual fatherhood and uh, in addition to this gracious service and great example. I'd just like to ask if we could pray for each other for a moment. I always like to do that because that gets you involved in how well I'm doing. And then if it goes badly, it's your own fault. <laughs> and if it's getting worse, pray harder. See how that goes? So... Let's just uh, pray for each other for a few moments in silence so that we can hear what the Lord wants to say to us. And let's also ask for our ladies in this session. Hail Mary. Direction is because 
It's in our spirit, it's in spiritual direction that everything else gets integrated. Our human formation, our pastoral formation, our intellectual formation, all gets integrated, united within us in our spiritual formation. And the principal agent of spiritual formation is the Holy Spirit, of course, and his great assistant is the spiritual director. It's so essential that we have that spiritual formation to bring everything else together. All of that happens inside of us. And so what I want to focus on this evening is what that looks like. What are we supposed to bring out into spiritual direction? Obviously, the complement of that is what are we, if we're giving spiritual direction, supposed to be looking for or helping the directee to bring out. And it really focuses on interiority, on what's happening inside of us. That's the stuff. I'd like to make a little contrast. If you could imagine, and we're probably not too far from that, even as I'm being videotaped here in the front, we're probably not too far from having little video cameras following us around everywhere. In fact, I've done some ministry in China over the last several years, and there are video cameras everywhere. We're probably not too far from having our entire lives recorded on video. That's not the most interesting stuff about us. What we can see from the outside, what a video camera could detail for us, is not the most important thing or the most interesting thing. And so in spiritual direction, we don't want to just give the video camera vision or view of ourselves. It's not enough to say, well, you know, I drove out here today and we drove more or less the speed limit and my spouse and I had a conversation and uh, it was raining and uh, we were going, uh, we stopped three times and this kind of recounting of what's happening from the outside sometimes is necessary to give a little bit of context while we were driving together on the way here, but then what we want to know in spiritual directions, what's happening on the inside? Well, what did you think about that conversation that you were having? How did you take in the beautiful surroundings? What were you anticipating as you came to this week-long weekend retreat? What's happening on the inside? What things are hard? What things are you struggling with? What things are you feeling? What's happening on the inside? I just want to read this first quote from a philosopher. He helps us to reflect on the inside, which is which belongs uniquely to each one of us. He says, There is an experience of myself from within that only I can have. We could call it my presence to myself. When I see myself as others see me, that's like that video camera view, I then become a public object to which they and I have equal access. But in my self-presence, in my subjectivity, I am withdrawn from public view, for I alone have access to myself from within. Another person would have to be me in order to be present to me as I am present to myself. So that's where the real uniqueness of our person is, inside of ourselves, what's happening within us. A little further explanation, this is quoting from our own book. Interiority is about what is happening inside of us, namely how we assimilate and process our whole lives. Interiority involves our thoughts and our feelings, our motivations and memories. Parts of our interior life are evident to an external observer, but not all of it. Our interior is complex and sometimes contradictory. Our thoughts may conflict with our feelings, for example. Likewise, we may behave almost like two different people in different situations. As St. Paul testified, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. So we know that internal contradiction, but we're always tempted 
to present ourselves as if we have it all together, as if there were no internal contradictions, as if everything we thought and felt were the right thing. It's always tempting to present ourselves that way, when in fact, if we take a little time in silence, it doesn't take too long to discover the mess. There's a little bit of a mess inside of ourselves. And that's the kind of stuff that we need to bring out, to hold out, most importantly, to the Lord. And as we have the chance for a Eucharistic holy hour, this is the stuff that we want to bring out to Him. What's going on inside of us? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? What are you afraid of? What are you hopeful for? What's exciting? Bringing all of that out, becoming more transparent, so the inside is on the outside. That's the most important movement for prayer, and that's what we really get practice with in spiritual direction. We find that spiritual direction and prayer very naturally flow into each other. The kinds of things that we bring out in spiritual direction about what's happening deep inside of us, we experience then from the spiritual direction, director, acceptance, love, understanding, and it's an, in an amazing way, God really becomes present in that encounter. And we start to see how in the midst of our messy interior, God is actually living there. God is inside of us, in fact, in the deepest place in us. So as we learn to make that exterior and spiritual direction, it helps us, in fact, to make it exterior in prayer. And then the most important thing to bring to spiritual direction is actually what's happening in our prayer. What's happening when I come before the Lord, when I'm just there exposed in front of Him as He is exposed in front of us? What's going on inside of me? Again, there's a temptation to say, oh, well, it's just fantastic, you know, I just pray like this the whole time and uh, I look perfect and God is so impressed with me. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> God is... In fact, deeply in love with us, but he's often not in love with the things that we think are the best parts of us that we want to show him all the time to impress him. He's actually in love with the mess also that's inside of us, with our contradictory thoughts and our conflicted feelings. To be honest, how often do we sit here in prayer and we're thinking about the weather and the football game and the things that we're missing back home? We're thinking about things that we're kind of embarrassed to admit when we're in the presence of God. But it's real. The only way we can have a relationship with God is in our humanity. God did not make us angels. He made us human beings. And He wants to have a relationship with human beings. And so He invites us to be ourselves, to open our hearts, to be honest with Him in prayer and again, that flows very naturally into spiritual direction. It's very honest to say, well, whenever I go to prayer, I find myself falling asleep. Well, what are you thinking about? Well, what's happening when you wake up? What do you do when you realize you just slept for 45 minutes in, in, in adoration? Well, then I get so upset at myself. These are the kinds of things. Be honest about that. Or, well, I think it's wonderful. You know, St. Therese, didn't have a problem with falling asleep in prayer. She knows that a father loves his little daughter just as much when she's sleeping as when she's awake. In fact, sometimes he loves her more when she's sleeping. <laughs> so we can be honest about these things. What's happening inside of us? How are we processing our lives? Another temptation is to talk about all the external things in spiritual direction, like all of everybody else's problems. Well, my wife does this wrong, and my children are doing this wrong, and my boss does this wrong, and the President of the United States is doing this wrong, and the bishop is doing, well, only the people from the other eparchy would say that. <laughs> the bishop is doing this wrong, and my pastor is doing this wrong, and okay, well, that might be nice, but how are you responding to it? What's it causing to happen inside of you? Well, it makes me suffer and I'm struggling, and I don't know what to do, and I don't know how to respond to that. It hurts me when he says that. Then we can go into that hurt. Well, and then we want to bring the Lord in there. Well, what's the Lord doing? How does the Lord help you when you're hurting? 
What does the Lord think of your pastor? So now we're processing things from the inside. It's really the direction we always want to go in spiritual direction is getting into the inside. What's going on inside of us? How we're responding to these things. If you don't know what's happening inside of you, the best way to find that out is through silence. Silence has a way of making the inside a lot louder. If we're afraid of what's happening inside of us, we make ourselves very busy and we create a lot of noise and we surround ourselves with a lot of noise. But silence is what really brings the inside to our attention, to the outside. And then we want to look at that, first of all, without judging it. Just be honest with what's going on inside. The heart, this, or the, uh, the catechism describes all of this interiority that I'm talking about. Interiority is probably a, anyway, a little bit more modern term. It's talking about the inside of us. The catechism describes this in terms of the heart. It's a biblical term. We talk a lot about the heart. What's happening in our hearts? The heart is the dwelling place where I am, where I live. According to the Semitic or biblical expression, the heart is the place to which I withdraw. The heart is our hidden center. Even beyond the grasp of our reason and of others, only the Spirit of God can fathom the human heart and know it fully. The heart is the place of decision deeper than our psychic drives. It is the place of truth where we choose life or death. It is the place of encounter because as image of God we live in relation. It is the place of covenant. It really gives us a beautiful thing to reflect on and just one thing to bring out there. The heart is something we don't even totally fathom in ourselves. And it's, again, one of the values of spiritual direction as we try to put our heart into words. What's happening in my heart? And I have a hard time even expressing it or understanding it fully. Again, those internal contradictions can be mysterious to us. I make decisions, and yet I do things I don't want to do. Why is this happening? But the Holy Spirit lives in the deepest place in the heart, and the, the Holy Spirit really knows us totally from within. And as we begin to describe it and try to put it into words with a spiritual director who is patient and listening, welcoming, accepting, understanding, then it helps us to find some way to express what's going on inside of us, in the heart. And then that helps us, in turn, to form that a little bit more deeply, sometimes to let go of some of the contradictions, sometimes a way to see how to let the Lord into those places where I'm afraid, where I'm hurt, where I feel broken, where I have thoughts that I'm embarrassed about. I can let God go more deeply into me because I've opened a place for Him in my self-revelation and spiritual direction. And then just to reinforce this idea about silence being so important, we have to take time in silence. We mandate in the seminary, as an example for how our priests should grow from there, every seminarian makes a holy hour every day. Every day. So important to have time in silence, not just it's wonderful to offer devotional prayers and to repeat prayers. Obviously, we have to pray the divine office. But in addition to all that, an hour of silence, just to be with the Lord. And ultimately, we've got to get in touch with, we've got to work with what's going on inside of us. There's a, an author, a Dominican, who was a, the, the thesis director, the dissertation director of John Paul II. So, that's a good credential. Uh, Father Gary de Lagrange, and this next quote I'd like to read for you on internal conversation. He says, As soon as a man ceases to be outwardly occupied to talk with his fellow men, as soon as he is alone, even in the noisy streets of the great city, he begins to carry on a conversation with himself. Maybe that's a relief for some of you, to know that everybody does that. 
<laughs> the interior life is precisely an elevation and transformation of the intimate conversation that everyone has with himself as soon as it tends to become a conversation with God. So it's really what we're in the business of doing as we're trying to grow in union with God is turning that conversation, that interior conversation, into a conversation with the Lord, with God. The interior life thus becomes more and more a conversation with God, in which a man gradually frees himself from egoism, self-love, sensuality, and pride, and in which, by frequent prayer, he asks the Lord for the ever-new graces that he needs. As a result, man begins to know experimentally, in his experience, no longer only the inferior part of his being, but also the highest part. Above all, he begins to know God in a vital manner, a living manner. He begins to have experience of the things of God. Little by little, the thought of his own ego, toward which he made everything converge, gives place to the habitual thought of God, an egotistical love of self and of what is less good in him also gives place progressively to the love of God and of souls in God. His interior conversation changes so much that St. Paul can say, our conversation is in heaven. So this is really what we want to have happen. But again, it requires silence and then paying attention. What are the things I'm thinking about? What are the things that I'm feeling? What's going on inside of me? Because often there are also several layers. What will happen is as we enter into silence, it's a little bit like putting a tea bag in hot water. The hot water has a way of drawing out the flavor from that tea bag. It draws it out from the center. Sometimes it draws out a little bit of the bitterness that's there, too, if we have a few bad leaves, you know, or a few stems that got worked into the tea. It draws out some of the bitterness. It draws out some of the flavor, the aroma. That's what happens in silence. We allow the Lord to draw that out of us, and then we can look at what that is. And again, that's the stuff that we want to bring especially to spiritual direction. We want to talk about the flavors that God is drawing out of us in the silence. We want to talk about the bitterness that's there, maybe from wounds, from past hurts, from resentments and frustrations. We want to be able to open up the interior and share that with a spiritual director. When we take time in silence, just paying attention. Again, not trying to control all of it at first, we're not trying to get a handle on it and force it certain places. Sometimes we're, we're embarrassed or surprised by the kind of maybe anger, rage even, that starts to well up. Or maybe the deep fears that are starting to come out. Or, or some of the thoughts we have. Maybe we struggle with faith. Struggle with even believing in God. And struggle because the church has been maybe a difficult place for us. Or we've had certain uh, disappointments and living in, in a church community. Maybe there are some of those wounds from the past that start to come out and we become present to them again. Whatever it is, we just need to observe it first of all, see it, and then as we learn to share it, especially with somebody that we trust in spiritual direction, spiritual companion, then it helps us to start to put some order to that. It helps us to, to share it even more with the Lord is to start to let his love shine on those places. You know, it's not unlike physical wounds that benefit from being aired out a little bit, that benefit from a little bit of sunshine and warmth. And likewise, the wounds in us, sometimes buried very deeply and sometimes very painful, can benefit from being aired out a little bit, being placed in the loving attention, the loving sunshine, of the Lord, again, first of all, and most importantly, but then also the loving sunshine of another human being who represents the Lord in spiritual direction, can bring a little bit of healing to some of those places in our hearts. So that's the kind of stuff that we want to do. I'm going to uh, wrap up here. We'll leave some of the rest of these points for tomorrow morning when we have some of that attention. Feel free to, to read over this. 
these uh, rules of St. Ignatius for the first week are very helpful guides to that simple question, well, how do I know how the Lord is speaking to me? How do I recognize when it's God who's speaking? And, of course, this is not a scientific instrument that we can, uh, you know, well, when the light goes on, you know, flick that on, flick it off. Uh, but, but it gives us a little sense. If we have some self-awareness, if we're looking at our interior life, we can get some sense of when it's the Lord speaking as opposed to when it's the enemy speaking, and then somewhere in the middle is just uh, ourselves speaking. But you can read over that a little bit if you'd like. In the meantime, we'll talk about it a little more in the morning. And then I wanted to give Father Tom a chance to share a word or two with you, um, maybe expanding on some of the things that I was saying or saying some of the things that were coming to me. Just to uh, round out a point that has already been made about the silence, uh, the most wonderful thing about our God is that, and this is missed by so many spiritualities of our time, God is personal. He's actually three persons whose divinely self-giving love is so perfect that the communion of those three persons is one God. And so in the silence uh, that we enter into in prayer, we have the opportunity to enter into a very deep communion. And we have become used to words. Consequently, when we enter into prayer, we typically use a lot of words, both words we have learned by rote, uh, as well as our own personal things that we have to say. But the way in which God speaks is primarily through silence. And that is one of the biggest frustrations that we can have, that our lives become so full of noise and interior conversations that involve words and thoughts and emotions that to enter into silence can be very disconcerting. We want to hear something from God. God, in fact, speaks to us in ways that are deeper than words. As we know, just as the Father Boniface was saying, the exterior does not convey the interior, or we might also say words cannot convey the depth and the fullness of what God is saying to us. So we might say that God is always sharing himself with us, and when necessary, he uses words. And he kind of wants to wean us away from that kind of dependency so that our relationship with him can become ever more deeply personal. So if the internal conversations that we have with ourselves turn into internal conversations with God and also begin to allow for internal silence and listen, then we can come into an ever deepening relationship with the Lord and the tremendous mysteries of the love of Christ through the cross, through the Eucharist, and the other sacraments become more and more enveloping, more and more consuming, and drawing us more deeply into the Lord. And spiritual direction is primarily whatever else in our lives we bring into spiritual direction is primarily an opportunity to share with the spiritual director what is going on in our prayer. That is the fundamental uh, matter, the fundamental issue that ought to be going on in our life. We want to begin with some questions. Uh, so uh, Father Boniface and I can uh, both, uh, for a few minutes here, uh, see if there are any questions or any points for discussion anyone would like to make. So for those who have any questions, raise your hand. 
raise your hand. We'll take a couple of questions, and then uh, uh, after that, we'll, uh, yes, Maria. I would like to know, is it then very important that your spiritual director is aware of the state For several reasons, that would certainly be the ideal. That would be what we're striving for, is to have consistency. Because the kind of intimate revelation that we're talking about is something that's hard to do, especially as we go deeper and deeper into our interior. And being able to build up trust takes time. So having that depth of trust is extremely important and grows over time and with consistency. And the other thing is that our spiritual director gets to know us very well and so can start to map some patterns that are that are unfolding over time and seeing how things are maybe we're handling different problems in the same way that needs to be adjusted or or, or sometimes even the spiritual director is able to say, well, yeah, you're going through a very difficult time. I, countless times directees will say to me, I, I feel like I'm not, you know, everything is wrong in my life. I, I can't, uh, my prayer is, is bad and God doesn't listen to me. And being able to say, well, I remember the last time we met, you know, a month ago, and you were having all of these lights. Do you remember that? And God said this to you. And, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, oh, actually, there are these other good things that are going on. So... Having somebody that really knows us is, is so such a great value as well. So, obviously, we wouldn't be offering spiritual direction this evening if there weren't some value in coming and sharing with somebody who knows how to listen and maybe can get to the heart of things uh, somewhat quickly, and you're being prepared to get to the heart of things quickly. So, there's a value in this time that we have now, uh, but certainly the goal is to find somebody that you can meet with consistently and even over many, many years. Yeah. Other questions? Yes, Paul. If I could ask the uh, flip side of the question. If you've had spiritual direction for many, many years with the same person, how do you discern that it's time to move on? What are some of the indications? Or are there times that you should consider um, different spiritual direction? Well, I think the most important thing, again, is about the interiority and about the prayer. And when it becomes uh, too difficult to get into that place, I have somebody who just started coming to me who was meeting with somebody. He had met with me many years ago, and then a geographical distance uh, interfered, and he met with someone in the meantime, and he said, we had a wonderful friendship, and we shared a lot, but it became too much about my job and about the weather and about the football and about the and the, the spiritual director was kind of inhibiting his going deeper and really getting into the deepest stuff and so he felt like it was really time to seek out and anyway we had the, the previous uh, relationship and spiritual direction so as long as we're able to really get into the deepest stuff and open that up and we feel like there's you know that's all being fruitful, we feel very free there. We see the good fruits from it. Um, at that level, that would be, you know, a good relationship to continue to continue with. And there's no reason. And in fact, if if we're starting to think about changing, one of the most you know, important things we can do is bring that up with the spiritual director. Sometimes that also breaks open a new level. We're able to express something. Maybe there's something subtle that's starting to get in the way, and just bringing it out, talking about it expressing some disappointment. Anyway, that can be a very, we've had a number of those conversations as well. And every time, it's led us to a deeper place. So I'd always encourage that. But there are times also that you know, the Lord is, is calling us away. So um, those are some ways to discern that. Yeah, it's a good question. So you have nothing to be afraid of. 
And uh, I think the, you know, the kind of stuff, talking about prayer, talking about what's happening inside of us, you know, even just talking, if there's some discomfort, it's a great place to start. I've never been to spiritual direction before. I'm, I feel very insecure, awkward, uncomfortable. I'm not sure what to do. Beautiful. That in itself is very honest and transparent, and that's letting me to, on the inside. Here's, a, here's a, a very valuable thing. The most beautiful part of us is the most vulnerable part of us. We're always afraid that those things that are interior and vulnerable are somehow uh, ugly. And in fact, you know, even those little insecurities and sharing those things is so beautiful. Nothing is more beautiful than vulnerability. The things that we put up are walls and defenses and uh, talking in circles so that nobody sees what's going on inside of us. That's very frustrating. <laughs> so, anyway, sometimes we have to make the transition from one end to the other, but the more that you can open your heart, you're going to receive a lot of love from the, certainly I can testify for the people who are here this evening. And, uh, and then just to share your prayer, to share what things are going on inside, and let the spiritual director even help you with that too, if there's some discomfort there. Any other questions or comments? I, I might add to that. Uh, usually spiritual direction, I don't think it's a really a good word, spiritual direction, because it sounds like you go in and you get directed in a certain place, but most good spiritual directors are very good listeners, and they let you find your, your way, and they support you to find that. And as, uh, as Pope Benedict said in his quote that I quoted today, uh, it, it depends, they, they have to have a good, solid background on who God is, what is objectively true, what is noble and good, and then with that they, they guide you. Not real normal, but kind of normal. <laughs> I would just uh, appreciate uh, Bishop Gregory bringing that out. There is uh, often a sense that we're supposed to get advice from a spiritual director. It's not the most important thing. Really, the spiritual director and the directee listen to God together. And the director is helping the directee listen to God. And that happens through that self-revelation, through opening the heart, through sharing the heart, then we start to see where God is, what He's doing inside of someone. We look at that together. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great point. It's not just about uh, getting advice or the sort of oracle or the guru that's uh, sitting there with all the answers. I, I, I can't have the answer to what's going on inside of you until you share what's going on inside of you and then we both see it together. And I help you to see what you're already bringing out. So that's really, uh, that's the beautiful thing in spiritual direction. The, the image on the front of our book for that reason is the two walking on the road to Emmaus. So when the two walk and share together, Jesus becomes present in that. That's kind of the dynamic of, of spiritual direction. So what I thought, uh, Maurice, can you come up and just tell so I believe that Father Tom Atlin, uh, right to, my, to my right, will be in the office here, which Bishop, uh, or Bishop uh, Spinoza's office. Father Boniface, I think that you will be, not in the confessional, but in the little corner there by the door. Is that correct? Yes, Maurice? And Father Nathaniel, or Arthur, okay. You will be over here at the, uh, not in the confessional, but in the, uh, in the drawer where there's two chairs there, so you can be face to face. Now, for the three priests, also, I think you'd be also available for confession, too. Right? Okay. If you would like to do some spiritual direction and some confession, you can just tell that to the, one of the three priests. Now, I myself, 
I'll be sitting right here. If anybody would like to come, not to confession. I think it's better for you to go to a confessor. Not that I'm not good at it, but sometimes I mess things up, so. <laughs> right, Father Jack. So, but I will be here if anybody just wants to come and chat, come and talk, okay? The sacrament will be before us. Father Jack will also be available for confessions, and he'll be in this confession right here. Father, uh, uh, Father Claude will be in this confessional over here on the left. And then Father Armando will be, where will you be, Father Armando? Maybe we'll find him. Back in the sacristy. No, because the sisters will be there. So take it away, Maurice, and tell us where the sisters will be. Okay, Sister Rosina will be in the sacristy to the right here. And Sister Marie Calvin will be in the sacristy to the left. And uh, Sister Dawn will be in the vestibule at the back behind uh, Jesus' uh, divine mercy. 